I saved this segment for the last segment of the day because I think it's very important people see just how serious the coronavirus pandemic is. And and I got to say, people need to stop downplaying this. In New York, we are potentially facing a shelter in place order, meaning you don't go outside. And there are some areas where you actually can't go outside. And in some countries, people are getting arrested for going outside. Now, that to me is scary. That's freaky. Not a big fan of the authoritarianism. But it is also scary that people just don't care about what's happening. Take a look at this story. Italy reports 475 deaths in one day. I don't think people understand what it means that our hospital system is being strained. And because we're doing a decent job, a a decent job of saving lives, they assume that it's not that big a deal. Here's a couple things you need to consider before we get into the news about what's happening here in the United States. When you see the death rate number being low, don't forget people are going to hospitals and having their lives saved by expensive medical procedures and technology. If it weren't for our hospitals, the death rate would be substantially higher. When you compare this number to the numbers in the past, you need to realize this is way more serious than any of these past epidemics. Take a look at Spanish flu, 2.5% mortality rate. And we had the medical technology of 1918. Compare that to today, 100 years later, we've got amazing developments in technology and the mortality rate is floating between one and 3%. 3.7 globally, 7% in Italy. Don't tell me that the medical technology and capacity in, in Italy right now is worse than it was in 19 around the time of the Great War. No, what we're really seeing is that people do not understand that amidst all of our developments, we are doing our best to put the fire out. It would be like if there was a building burning and firefighters were spraying it with water and the fire was being held back. And someone said, it's not even a big deal. The fire's small. Who cares? Why should we bother spraying it with water? While they're telling you, if you don't, it will grow out of control. We are seeing numbers that are scary, even though we are trying our best to shut things down. So this is Italy in one day, 475 deaths. But let's take a look at what's going on in New York. New Yorkers should be prepared for a shelter in place order, Mayor Bill de Blasio says. New Yorkers, uh, so uh, yeah, here's the quote. In the next, they're saying a decision will be made in the next 48 hours. We are deeply concerned. This is quite clear. This is a fast growing crisis. He said at a press conference, all New Yorkers, even though a decision has not been made by the city or the state, I think that all New Yorkers should be prepared right now for the possibility of a shelter in place order. There are now 814 confirmed cases in New York, he said adding that 248 are in Queens. We, we know the numbers. And actually, this story is uh, from the other day. The numbers got up, gone up quite a bit since then. De Blasio said he doesn't take the decision lightly, acknowledging that New Yorkers will face tremendously substantial challenges under a shelter in place order. Folks have to understand that right now, with so many New Yorkers losing employment, losing paychecks, dealing with all sorts of stresses and strains, I'm hearing constantly from people who are tremendously worried about how they're going to make ends meet. In that scenario, A shelter in place begs a lot of questions. What is going to happen with folks who have no money? They say, what is a shelter in place? San Francisco Bay Area officials ordered some 7 million residents to shelter in place on Monday, prohibiting people from leaving their homes except under limited circumstances. People who venture out are expected to remain six feet apart, wash their hands, cover their coughs or sneezes, and abide by a number of other restrictions. Non-essential businesses across the state including wineries and bars, will be closed. But essential services such as grocery stores, banks, and pharmacies will remain open. Residents are allowed to walk their dogs or go for a run so long as they maintain a distance of at least six feet from anyone they don't currently live with. San Francisco Health Officer Dr. Grant Colfax said at a press conference Monday, de Blasio didn't provide details on what a shelter-in-place order would look like in New York City, The city is working on a variety of ways to ease the burden on New Yorkers, including suspending alternate side parking rules that require residents to move their cars for street cleaning and providing food for students while city schools are closed, he said. I don't live in a big city. I'm in the suburbs. I have a backyard. I have a house. I have a front yard. And we're not in a particularly dense place. I mean, relative to New York City. If things get really, really bad, it's going to start in the center of cities. I've lived in New York. The apartments are expensive and they're, I've lived in New York. The, the apartments are expensive and they're tiny. Right now, people can't go outside. And when you live in a tiny, tiny apartment, you start getting cabin fever after a while and you want to go outside, go for a walk, go to a bar and you can't do it. 
I don't know. I don't know where you guys all live where, you know, but me being in the suburbs, I'm not feeling the heat all that much. Now I'm worried seeing the rapid rise of deaths, the government instituting the, the, the national, uh, what is it? The, uh, the Defense Production Act, the expansion of more federal authority, curfews, quarantines, bars being shut down. It's scary stuff. But you know what? I'm in a house and I got a backyard. We can go out in the yard. I can get some fresh air. I can walk around. I don't need to go walk around the city. But in New York, you can't do that. In Philly proper, you can't do that. In Chicago, you can't do that. In certain parts of Chicago. Actually, Chicago isn't as dense as New York City. But I can only imagine that people there are going to start freaking out and they will start freaking out first. Now, now we've got some pushback, though. Apparently, Bill, uh, uh, get a grip, Bill. Cuomo blasts panic and fear being created by calls for a total NYC lockdown to fight coronavirus in veiled attack on de Blasio, but says a huge hospital ship will be sent to the city. So Trump has announced there's going to be a Navy hospital vessel sent to New York. And my understanding is it's not to help with coronavirus, but other medical uh, issues. So the people who have coronavirus will be able to go to the hospitals and then everyone else will have these emergency do- you know, ships being docked. And that's really, really cool, I might add. You know, if you've got a, if you're in a port town, they can bring that ship in. And now we got like a mobile hospital. So that's kind of cool stuff. But there is still stuff to worry about when it comes to New York. This is from, I'm not sure who this, who this guy is. This is Peter Adia. And he says, just received word from an ICU doctor at a small New York hospital. They are officially out of ventilators and are now double venting patients with COVID using the same ventilator for two infected patients. Do everything possible to avoid infection. Please isolate best you can. Now, what's really disconcerting here is this tweet. Warning. This is from Chris Jansen of MSNBC. There are concerning reports out of France and Italy of some young people getting seriously ill in ICUs. Dr. Burks says it may be because millennials looked at data from China of coronavirus largely impacting older people. Everyone must heed the guidance. No larger groups. Spring break, South Beach, Miami. Young people are laughing and ignoring these calls. And just because you're young and you're not likely to die doesn't mean you can't get sick. The doctor in China who was put on a ventilator and then died was 34 years old. The mortality rate is high and we have advanced technology. That's what people don't understand. We can look at some of these viruses and with modern treatments, we can reduce the mortality rate from the flu, you know, 100 years ago to the same strain of flu today to, within reason. There's some things we really can't do, but it looks like things are going to get they're going to get bonkers. Uh, that's the best way I can put it, right? It's going to get crazy, huh? This guy's saying that young people are getting more infected in Italy, where we just saw a massive spike in deaths. Over in New York, they're running out of they're, uh, they're running out of ventilators. And now we have this. Coronavirus prompts Board of Correction to call for release of inmates from NYC jails. That's tough, man. In Philadelphia, they said they're not going to they're not going to arrest people for certain crimes, including auto theft and burglary and vandalism. They're straight up saying they're not going to enforce certain crimes anymore. What are they going to do? Show up, take your name down, walk away, and you keep going about it? Now in New York, they want to release people from jails. And that's challenging. I understand why they want to do it. They want to do it because this could get really bad, and we don't want to create more infections. In which case, with people being tested, with, with guards you know, being quarantined, they're naturally saying it's time to release people. There's a reason why I'm highlighting all of these stories. Um, again, mostly it's about showing you the severity of how things are going. But now take a look at this from the ACLU. We're calling for the immediate release of individuals in prisons and jails who, according to the CDC, face heightened risk of severe illness or death due to COVID-19. As public health experts have repeatedly said, federal, state and local officials must take steps now to decarcerate and protect those involved in the criminal legal system. Eighty five thousand people, I believe, is the number of prisoners released in Iran. I don't know what a total breakdown would look like, but if we're going to release everyone from our jails, release tons of people from our prisons, stop enforcing laws. Younger people are getting sick. We've run out of ventilators. 475 people died overnight in Italy, and people are not taking this seriously. Then don't be surprised if New York does institute some hard lockdowns, if the National Guard comes in to enforce those lockdowns, and you see something we've never thought could happen. Optimism bias will blind you. A lot of people want to say it could never happen here. It couldn't happen to me, but it's literally happening before our eyes. Take all of this seriously. That's all I can really say. I, I, I will I will end by saying it's uh, it's rather shocking to me even that we've entered uh, we, we've come to this point. It was weeks ago. I was talking about it as though it wasn't here and it's a different country. It's here now. 
I hope I've shown you enough to explain to you why it's serious. It's both the severity of the virus, the lack of supplies, as well as the response from government. You're going to be locked down and, and, and police aren't going to be enforcing certain crimes. I don't know what else to say or what you, uh, what you expect, but this is legit. It's here and it's real. And I hope most of you went out and got supplies when you had the chance. Uh, my understanding is you can go to grocery store. There's still going to be food and supplies. But as far as I could tell, when I went, shelves were empty, man. They say they're going to be restocked. I don't know when or what the plan is, but needless to say, I'm a bit worried. I, ho I hope you're at least taking it seriously. I'll see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out.